Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Robbie Rowe Show. This is your host, Robbie Rowland. Thanks for tuning in. Schedule your skill development. So I should be able to look at your schedule from from today to the next month, month and a half, and I should know what you're going to be uh, striving to improve on. What skill? Yes, sir. What is going on, guys? It's your host, Robbie Rowan, on episode 51.2, episode 51 with Diamond Hall, part two. I want to thank you guys for tuning in, um, especially for those of you who are coming from part one and said to yourself, like, wow, dude, that was absolutely fire flames. Uh, So what's funny is I never say fire flames, and I just said it on my podcast. Um, Yikes. Hashtag 2019? Question mark. Uh, By the time I release this episode, I think it will be 2019. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, Anyways, hope you all are doing well today. Um, I'm excited to bring you guys part two. Uh, Just to give you a little brief overview of what uh, what we go in on is habits, right? I think you guys heard it at the end of part one. Uh, We were just about to dive into habits. Diamond's real big on habits. Um, And my probably, my favorite part of this episode probably comes within the first 10, 15 minutes of it. Uh, but we talk about participation trophies and for those of you millennials out there, um, it's almost ruining, uh, your guys's, uh, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not going to say it in the introduction. I'm, I, I don't, I don't mean it. I just, I'm very passionate about participation trophies. You'll, you'll hear it coming up soon. So I won't even elaborate it. Just know that we talk about it. Um, we talk about how there's different types of leaders, uh, what to identify in certain individuals to bring out their, their specific leadership qualities. Uh, a big one that I like to always harp on is, is what are you controlling and what can you control in this certain situation? So basically in layman's terms, control the controllables, right? Uh, you probably hear that over and over again, but what exactly does it mean and how do we, and how do we act upon that, right? Like how do we, what does that look like? So definitely a, a big one. And then as you guys heard in the sound bite for this episode, we talk about scheduling our skill development. Um, if you don't know what that means, I don't want to ruin it. I'll let Diamond talk about it for you, but definitely, uh, I mean, shoot, man, it, it, it like hit me right in the nose as far as like, why, why wouldn't we all be doing that? It's just, there's stuff that he talks about. Um, I know you guys heard most of it in part one and you'll hear the rest of it here in part two, but it's just to break it down in, in simplistic terms and go, wow, these are things that I can do uh, in, in my day, in my life to, to get the best athlete in me. Yeah, no accident. Uh, at this time, well, shout out to uh, a sponsor of the show. Pocket Radar. Um, for for those of you aspiring big league ball players out there, uh, I know you probably hear me talk about the demand for velocity, the the demand for ball speed in today's day and day and game. Um, and I think as we progress in a culture of uh, the demand being increased and increased, I think we need to hold ourselves accountable through measuring uh, exactly what our velocity is. I'll, I'll say that the off season that I made the most gains. Uh, before my season in 2015 with St. Louis was the off season that I got a pocket radar for Christmas. It was like the first off season. I think they, they, they came out and it was like, it wasn't every day I was tracking uh, my throws, but Oh man, like five to six times a week. It was like, yo, like where are we at today? And then you, you, I'd go home and I'd write it down. Like, okay, this is what I was at this day. Let's, let's, we, let's wait a week and test it again. Um, anyways, it's no, it's no secret now that velocity matters. You're going to get opportunity after opportunity if you, if you, if you're throwing hard. Okay. Even, even a position player, there's use for it. Um, so what I can do for you today is I can save you 10%. Go to pocketradar.com, discount code Robbie 10. Um, that's pocketradar.com, discount code Robbie 10. That's R O B B Y 10. So make sure you guys look into that and thank you for Pocket Radar for uh, teaming up with me on that one. Uh, so without further ado, I hope you guys uh, enjoy part two of Diamond Hall's podcast. Thank you guys uh, for tuning in, being subscribers. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and be a subscriber, right? Because then I could I can classify you guys as subscribers and that's just cool. I, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyways, I'm done talking. Um, here's Diamond Hall, episode 51.2. Love you guys. God bless. We'll talk to you soon. There's a sacrifice 
that you mm. got to make. And it's doing these little things, man. It's like checking off all those boxes. And uh, but no, Absolutely. man, that's that's that's, that's freaking huge. But I wanna I wanna break it down. We 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 checked off leadership. We checked off process. Let's let's dive in head first to habits and creating. Uh, you know, creating, yeah, man, like creating individualized personal habits. Um, like as, as you as a teacher, what does that look like for you trying to, uh, teach habits, good habits, obviously to, to one of your, uh, students. So I think it all starts a matter everything first before we even go there, like to me and through the things that I've, through the things I've learned and through, through the guys that I've been able to work with, I've, I've, I've learned that. When it comes to the mental side of the game, awareness is the foundation of everything. And, and this also is with the physical side of the game. Awareness, when you talk about body awareness, you talk about swing awareness, you talk about mechanic awareness, like awareness is everything. It is the foundation to growth. So when, I, when we talk about habits or when I'm teaching uh, anything about habits or, or we're trying to reconstruct the guy's habits, it starts with being aware of what habits you already have. Hmm. Most people don't even know the habits that they already have. Most people don't even know what they do after an umpire makes a bad call, after they miss, after they're on the mound and they miss a and they miss a spot, or they do hit their spot and the umpire um, and mm. the umpire calls it something else. Like they don't even know what they do after that. Like that's a habit right there. Right. That's a habit. Like right. what's your ha- what do your habits look like after you after you make a mistake? Like if I were to put you on video. And I didn't show you the video and I just asked you, what do you think you did afterwards? And you don't know. That means your awareness is low of what you do and what your habits are. So first, it's seeing where guys are when it comes to their awareness of their habits. And then if they're not aware of their habits, we, we, we like bring those to the forefront. And then we figure out the things we want to change. And, and then everything is simple from there. Like after you're aware of something, after you're aware of a certain habit that's either hindering you or helping you, now you can begin to make progress towards improving it, changing it, replacing it, whatever you want to do. Hmm. What um, I'm curious, man. Like, what is like, um, what is the one thing that you see uh, like bad habits wise? Um, I, I could give you my answer, but I won't. But bad habits wise in like kids uh, in this generation, aspiring, you know, baseball players. What, what age group? I'd say like high school into college. High school, college. I'd say. I mean, the to be to keep everything simple is to is. The worst habit I see is um, when guys are how to put this responding to things that are outside of their control or 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 giving giving their focus to things that are outside of their control. Mm. Uh, if that makes sense, totally. And I'm and like you said earlier, like dude, I'm big on the controllables as well. Yeah. But that that again, that starts with awareness. If, if God doesn't even know what those controllables are, or what those uncontrollables are. Like he, he'll have, he won't be able to make any progress. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's what I would say. The number one, totally. number one habit I, I would see at the high school level, yeah. the high school level. I, uh, I, uh, I, I keep it real, man, on my show. And I don't mean any, I don't mean any disrespect to the individuals that are listening to this podcast because they're listening in They're They're seeking out knowledge. They're seeking out information. I, I like, I love that. Right. So I, I want to say that before I say yeah. this part, but we live oh, in a we li- we, li- we live in a generation, man. We live in a day and age where we have a lot of privileged kids. Um, mm. We have a lot of kids that that get a get a simple mindset growing up that they think they're owed things. So when I was mm. growing up, uh, maybe probably the same for you too, man. When we lost, we didn't get jack. You know, we didn't uh, <laughs> we didn't get no participation trophies, right, man? So of course not. So course when, not. When, when we lost, we got bitter, man, and and uh, it was like, yo, I, I didn't like that taste in my mouth uh, after that loss. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go home tonight, and uh, I'm gonna shoot some shots in the front, or I'm gonna go take some swings in the back to make dang sure that that feeling that I had when I lost or when I failed doesn't happen again. You know, mm-hmm. um, and I think today with with the uh, the participation trophies. Um, and just creating a, a mindset around kids saying like, hey, if you just play, you know, that's good enough. Um, so you know, to kind of wrap that all up, it's, uh, you know, and again, I, I don't mean any disrespect. I'm just keeping it real. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of kids when when they fail, you know, we talk about or how how people respond to specific things or, or certain things in life, you know, especially in the game when it comes to failing. 
And, uh, and a lot of these newer generation kids, just from kind of what I've seen and what I've heard is, is these kids, once they fail, man, it's like, nah, I, I pout. Like I shouldn't, I shouldn't have failed. Like, uh, that, that shouldn't have happened to me. Now I'm sad and I'm not going to do anything about it. Um, yep. you know, I'm going to go sit on the couch and play Fortnite and not, and not, mm-hmm. you know, sit there with my eyes closed, visualizing that nah. same situation, but <laughs> exactly. having success in that same situation. Can I get an amen, man? <laughs> exactly. You're exactly right. And, and I'm not going to lie to you, man. I think it comes from, again, like we talked about earlier, it comes from that conventional wisdom of the people who are teaching these, uh, you know, teaching these guys, teaching these players. And, and again, like you said before, like that's no disrespect, but that's that's the reality. Like that's the reality of the situation. Like they're they're They are like that because of who they're being taught by product and environment. That's, I mean, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, we we learn things and and things are natural and we uh, we get things from other places. But but these things, if they're not addressed by their coaches or by their players, like that, it's uh, not by the players, but by their parents. Like it's just going to like it's going to stay there. And I agree with you one hundred percent. I think that whenever you do give somebody a trophy after they after they lose, like now that what that's telling them that's telling them not only that it was okay that they, that they lost and that like, you're supposed to feel you know, somebody's going to be there for you or something's going to be there for you after you compete and after you lose. Um, but that's, that's not only teaching that within the game of baseball, but that's teaching them that within life too. Like mm. that's, I think that's the worst part about it for me is like now, now they're going to get to a point where, you know, they, they don't get a job interview and they've been conditioned to think like, Oh, well, well, do I get anything from this or, or, something goes wrong totally. and mm. they, they join some kind of form of competition and they mean they might not even know it's a competition but it is and they don't achieve whatever it is they want to achieve and now they're going to be if that thing is not there that reinforces to them like hey everything's okay everything's good you still try like, like it's it's going to hurt them mm. in the long run like that's where i think about it. like it really for me it goes like deeper 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 than and farther and farther and farther from, from baseball after that standpoint, it's like you're hurting them for the like in their life too, like how they handle failure, how they handle situations that are inevitable, situations that are going to be guaranteed. Like you're guaranteed to lose, like for the rest of your life at some point in time. Guaranteed, dude. <laughs> it's guaranteed, like bro. It's guaranteed. Success yeah. is not guaranteed, but mm-hmm. I guarantee if you don't know how to. Uh, if you don't know how to bounce back as quickly as possible in the most efficient way possible from those guaranteed failures that are sitting right in front of you that are already planted on your calendar, then, then that is, it is going to be a tougher road than it should be. Oh man. No kidding. It's, and it's crazy too, right? Like we talk about, and, and this goes for all sports, but I'm going to specifically talk about baseball, but baseball just breeds freaking just, competitors man and, and you see a yes. lot of a lot of people uh it's funny i had uh i had jake thompson who who owns and operates uh compete every day that he does a podcast he's got a pretty good brand and uh he, that's one thing he talked about was like you see these athletes man that they their whole life they're just competing and they're grinding and they're they're just scratching and clawing for everything that they they get and then they they throw them out into the workplace and it's like it don't matter dude it's a freaking mindset right it's not the game that makes us who we are it's like it's who we are and and, and just attributing it to you know whatever we do in life in general so i think yeah man like mm-hmm. I, I appreciate you bringing that up because you know, a lot of people, when they listen to my show, they're like, okay, I'm going to listen to Robbie. He's going to talk about baseball. He's going to talk about, you know, nutrition, fitness, whatever. But I mean, that goes far beyond, you know, I mean, this is real life stuff, man. So why not put yourself in the best possible position for you to catapult your career on and off the baseball field, man. So I appreciate you bringing that up. That's big time. Um, Absolutely. I wish I could sit down with the people who come up with the idea of, hey, let's give these guys a Let's give all the fourth and fifth place winners a trophy. And I wish I could just like really like compromise with them and, and just like let them know what that's doing in the long run. Because, I mean, it, as humans, we want to we, we don't want to see other people fail. Like we don't want to see our yeah, kids we, fail. They we got kind hearts. Fail. So, so we do want to like we like our natural thing is like, hey, it's OK. But at some point in time, there has to be, a, you know, what I would, I would call it a balance. There has to be a balance. Right. There has to be a strategic balance between the two, because I know that I like if I think about 
my baseball career and you can think about your baseball career, think about the times that we've we faced failure. If somebody were there every time we faced failure and we got some kind of reward for just participating, then we probably wouldn't be who we are right now. Nope. Nope. Totally. And oh, it, it, I just wish I could have a seat and just like, like let's, let's have a yeah, conversation with the guys. Mean, like, what are we doing? <laughs> and I get it too, man, because it comes out of the kindness of their hearts. You know? It does. And, and I it totally does. get it. But I think the balance thing that you talk about, dude, it, that's – and I'm a big Kobe guy and I saw Kobe on your on your, on your your channel or your page. Oh, and, yeah. And so I know you, oh, yeah. you're you about that mama mentality. But he talks about oh. it all the time, dude. He's like – if you if you are a leader, you have to demand excellence from your guys, man. And exactly. and once your guys do not uh, play or perform at that at that level of excellence that you see that they could potentially perform at, then there's got to be a conversation there. There's got to be something there that like yo. You know, and again, I, I understand that it goes back to that whole individualized thing, and this is kind of where I like to talk about. It, there's that, there's that, that sweet spot, right? Some guys are the, hey, like I'm going to get in your grill, maybe we'll we'll throw some punches, but then I know that we're going to be tight, and you're gonna and you're gonna play better. But then there's that guy that you know maybe was a little privileged, but he's got dang good skills that you know it's it's a conversation of like, hey man, like you know what do you think about what that hard 90 you ran, you know, you think maybe you could have beat it out since he bobbled, you know, and then it's a conversation. But, um, I, I think, I think there's a lot of, a lot that goes into it, man, is, especially if we want to go back to that whole leadership talk, dude, is, is the man oh, yeah. excellence, right? Absolutely. And now, now you're, dude, I love this term. So now you're diving into the types of leaders that, that you have, like there are different types of leaders. Mm. And uh, to me, um, what I've learned is I think that the best leaders are, are the guys who are aware of again, that come back down, co- comes back down to awareness. But they're the guys who are aware of how each guy around them operates and yeah. what they'll take in and what they won't, hmm. Hmm. and how they respond. How they and respond how they to respond. certain, yeah, 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 yeah. They're able to know before they even have a conversation with them. They see the problem. Everybody sees the problem. Mm-hmm. Every coach can see when a, when a guy's not relaxed on the mound. Mm-hmm. But now, do you know how to communicate it with them, and then do you know what to tell them? Uh, like, like what, where to guide him, what direction to guide him towards so he can learn how to become more relaxed on the mound. Totally. Dude, you see that, what I mean? So, dude, that's totally, yeah. I mean, again, that that's uh, that's like my, literally like my perfect explanation of, of, of how I was kind of early in, early in my career. You know, like, yeah. I mean, I had, I had leaders that, you know, you get in the pro ball, I'm 18, 19 year old kid just got paid like good money. So all these guys are like, Hey, I'm going to get in this guy's grill and beat him into shape. Right. But I didn't (laughs) respond to that. Well, man, like I almost, I almost was like, Oh, I'm going to show this guy. So now I'm trying harder. Um, and you know how in, in the game of baseball, dude, anytime you try, 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 it's like you, you, you miss that, that, that sense of confidence, that sense of relaxedness, if you will, uh, when you're performing. And, and that's, and that's that rabbit hole that I freaking dove into early in my career, man, was, you know, and we shoot, we could sit here and talk about it for hours, but just to keep it simple, it was just the identification of, uh, knowing myself, knowing what I did respond well to and knowing what I didn't respond well to, you know, and, and surrounding myself with the individuals that were going to best, uh, you know, get them best out of me. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, yes, that yes. Sense. And that, 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 again, that boils back down to that, that self-awareness. Like that's where I'm going to always take point everything back to is that is the ability to, to become as self-aware as possible. Like, and, and if you're a Kobe fan and you, mm. you say you are a Kobe fan, dude, like me too, like give it to me. Kobe baby. is one of the most, he's the one, he's one of the, he's one of the most aware people um, within the game of within the game of basketball, like he's very very self aware. He's always been self aware. If you listen to him and he understands how, like where his anger came from, and then he figured out how to direct that anger into into um, into production, into mm-hmm. um, into things that would work to his favor. Mm-hmm. Like his awareness was so high. And I do. You remember playing like Madden? You remember playing like like two K? And, and and one of the one of the uh, one of the things one of the Oh, what were they called? Like you had the bars where you had like speed, you had like acceleration, you had like um, LT, RT, like, uh, <laughs> LT. Yeah, yeah. And then you also like one of the things that also they also had with like every player profile was awareness, and I never got it. 
but every time I would shoot my player's awareness all the way up to 99, <laughs> like his whole thing would go, his whole like overall bar would go up. Now it makes sense. Because now, because we already know you were shooting that guy's awareness up to 99 when you created that player. <laughs> oh, yes. That was the first thing. Like, oh, every time I shoot this up to 99, it's overall going to go up to 87, even if everything else is at 67. Like, <laughs> it didn't make sense, but now it does, you know, through learning these kind of things. Like, oh, man. But, it's the separator, man. It's it, the separator. And, and it is, man. And, and uh, a big thing I want to spend a little bit of time on harping is like, you know, we talk about Kobe, man. We talk about that mentality that he has. We talk about the leadership qualities that he possesses. And and these are things that, you know, maybe you can argue that he was just born with because of his pops. But he he gained those as he grew as a basketball player, as an athlete. He, exactly. He gained those things. So it's like if you're a kid – uh, you know, a 17 year old aspiring professional athlete, like there's nothing that you should see when Kobe does his whole detail thing on ESPN or when he just sits and talks about an interview about his process and just the, the, the mindset he has, the, the, the work ethic that he has, like all of those things that he possesses, like you can too, right? Like if you're, if you're exactly. sitting there watching him on YouTube, man, and I know I, I just respond so well to that stuff because at the end of the day, like Maybe I'm not going to acquire the same amount of skill and talent that a Kobe Bryant has, but the the qualities uh, that he possesses, um, as far as his his work ethic, his like I said, his mindset, all that stuff, like I can I can too, you know, I can too. Absolutely, um, I, I agree with you 100. percent Yeah, 100. percent That fires that fires that, me up, <laughs> dude. Me too, man. And there's a uh, I've had so many different conversations about this, like whether or not Kobe was born. Uh, or, or, or these like ultimate like like competitors were were born with these things or or not. And to be honest with you, when I think about like Kobe Bryant, like if if he were, um, like he, I think he was born with the physical abilities. Absolutely, totally, like, he was born with the physical abilities. But like you said, I think throughout the course of his life and throughout the course of his career, like some of these leadership qualities, like they were they were grown and they were they were learned. Whether it was on a uh, whether it was on a conscious level or an unconscious level, like he either learned these things on purpose or situations arose to where he had to figure out and choose, like how do I'm, how am I going to take in this situation and what am I going to learn from it and what where is this going to go into you know my attributes? Is this going to go into my leadership? Is this, you know what I mean? So totally. Um, and, yeah. and if I can remember right, like he used to be when he played in France, like he was getting bullied by everybody because he wasn't, because he wasn't good. Is that right? Yeah. He's skinny. Is that, he's skinny. Yeah. And like he, he said, he couldn't like, uh, he couldn't hang with the big boys, man. Yeah. So the, from there, like what he did differently than everybody else to me is like, okay, he used that, uh, he used that fire and he put that fire all into one direction to where it was kind of like uh, a blowtorch mm. as opposed to a, a different guy or, or the average Joe or to come across those same situations and those same forms of adversity and challenges, like for them, the fire is going to spread everywhere. It's going to burn the whole house down, but he was able to direct that energy mm. into the right place. Mm. And I even remember Michael Jordan saying something along the lines of, uh, huh. like he gets butterflies just like everybody else. But the difference between him and everybody else is that he just directs those butterflies in the right direction. Oh man. Oh man. And then he punches again, Steve Kerr. <laughs> Dude, but but again, it comes back to that self awareness. Like, if your self awareness is not there, which is that, which I think is the foundation of the mental side of the game. Um, yeah. I think that if that's not there, then you're going to struggle more than you should. Totally. I mean, it's like yeah, it, sure. it, 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 why 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 uh, why complicate it, right? I mean, yeah. But at at the end of the day, it's like okay, we've talked about all of these things. Almost, dude, literally, this is what I love about this show uh, between you and I is like everything we've talked about here, there are things that anyone listening can implement into their life. Oh, yes. yes. Every single one. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm writing them down. I'm reading off. You know, we talk about um, just consistency. We talk about, uh, you know, you don't like the word routines, but I wrote it anyway. <laughs> Visualization, <laughs> uh, minimizing struggles, yeah. leadership, process, habits, um, you know, awareness, like controlling the controllables, man. These are all things that, you know, if, if you're a little Billy watching or listening to this dang show, write these down, man. You know, like – Write these down and be like, yo, this can be me. This can be me. I can do this. Um, yes. There's nothing separating you from the, the, the great you know, leaders or the great people that, that have the mindset behind it. Um, 
and I know I know we're getting pretty long into our show, and I apologize, but I know you and I are both passionate about this. But um, absolutely, bro, we got time. Totally. Uh, so we got time. Another thing I want to dive into, dude, and I and I know this is going to be big, but obviously we talk about all of these things that we can control, right? All of these things that we can implement. Now, yeah. it's the application, right? It's the application mm-hmm. of a, a basically applying all of these into our, our, our life. And, and it's, that, it's that, what does that look like? You know, how, how do we do that now? Uh, bring us home, man. How do, how, do, how do you teach one to kind of implement all, the, all of these things into their, into their life? First, I would... Um... I mean, I would start out with making a list of, of everything that you do want to implement. And then simply from there, going in the priority, like what, what's the number one priority that you feel like would bring you the closest to your goals right now if you were to implement this into your game or into your life or into your uh, into your game as a pitcher, into your game as a hitter, into your game as a coach. Like uh, what's the number one thing? And then what's the number two thing? What's the number three thing? Now you take the numbers, the, the, the three things, the top three things. And you you do your best to master those within the next month, mm-hmm. and then after that month is over, you look back and say, okay, like when I started the, at the beginning of this month, this was out of six out of ten, ten being like really really good, mm. zero being like not good at all. Like this was out of six. Now I feel like it's at an, at an it's at an eight. This was at a three. Now I feel like it's at an at an uh, at a seven. Right. This was at a two, but now I feel like you know I've, I've done the right things. That this is at a five right like and then you have to evaluate whether or not this is something that you want to continue working on or if that if it's at the level that you want to uh you want it to be at and then you can go from there but the one thing i do see the biggest thing that i uh, that i do see the biggest mistake i, I should say is guys know all like everything we talked about today mm-hmm. like they're going to try to or, or they would try to implement everything right now like, oh no, yeah get the overwhelmed the biggest thing that you took yes take the biggest thing that you that you took from today the number one thing and Start applying that to your life throughout the next, or, or not even applying it. Start, start, start studying it a little bit. Start, start diving into it. Like, look here, look over there. Be mindful and about it. Be be mindful about it, and then do the things that you find that that will that you feel like will help for you to implement that. Does that make sense? And again, that goes yeah. back to everybody being everybody being different. Like some guys, the awareness thing may have, may not have clicked today, even though I've tried to push that. <laughs> <laughs> and I push it every time I, I talk about anything. It may not click, but if visualization did, then okay, like yeah. apply that. Well, that's the beauty about but, everyone being different, right? It's like exactly that's the beauty. You could about say it. a word to someone, and it goes boom. Like I don't know if you heard that snap of my finger, but it's like click. And then exactly. you know another guy goes, "Wait, what? I, I didn't really, I didn't get that." Yep. Um, and it's 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 literally just a matter of. Um, I like to talk about scheduling your skill development. To be honest with you. Yeah, like schedule your skill development. That's the number one thing that I that I talk to every single uh, professional player, college player that I work with one on one, and our guys at Wright State um, is to schedule your skill development. So I should be able to look at your schedule from from today to the next month, month and a half, and I should know what you're going to be uh, striving to improve on. What skill is it going to be? Um, is it is it going to be your swing mechanics? Is it going to be uh, is it going to be your spin rate? Is it going to be um, your ability to to dot up the the uh, the up and away slider? Like what, yeah. what's it going to be? Like you you have to schedule everything. Once you do that, now it makes everything easier for you. Now you you you're, you're putting it down to hold yourself accountable to make sure that that you will start striving towards uh, towards moving that way, right? But. Um, I think that's another thing, even when it comes to like a book, like you read, you can read a golden book, like every, all this book's so full of gold. Yeah. But the one mistake I see people make is that they read a book all the way through. I've never, well, I can't say I've never done that. At the beginning of my career, uh, I did that like all the time. Now, if I get a new book, I'll read the first chapter. And to understand that first chapter, to really understand that first chapter throughout the next week, I'll do everything in my power and treat every situation uh, at a point where like, okay, how can I apply the things that I learned in that chapter here? Mm. How can I apply it there? And you practice it for a mm. little bit because I mean, and, and, and it's tough. This takes discipline totally. because when you read a really good book, you, you read, you read the, the first chapter of relentless. Like you want to go on to the second chapter. Mm. You want to go on to the third chapter like today. 
But if you really want to be able to apply those things that, that you've gotten in these chapters, you got to have the discipline to be like, ah, like I'm going to wait. I'm going to apply this for the next two, three days so I can actually understand it. Because when you read something like, like now, you know, mm-hmm. if I read a whole book, like now I know, now I know this is awesome. This motivates me. This makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. But to understand something, you have to be able to do it. You have to be able to apply it. You have to be able to practice it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dude, so I think discipline, discipline, I mean, you hit it on the head with discipline, right? Like as a, uh, and, and, and at the same time, like we're not, we're not asking perfection of anyone listening. No, you know, we oh, know, absolutely not. you know, yeah, we know, I mean, shoot, man. I mean, I'm sure you and I both like we, you know, even though we perceive ourselves on Instagram or, or social channels, whatever, like, oh, we're, we're perfect. Like we all have our flaws, man. And we all, we all absolutely. struggle with, with discipline sometimes. And I know. Uh, the only thing that I can do in my power to help counteract that is just be very mindful throughout like the whole day of, of, and I I love that you said scheduling skill development, like get ahead of your day. You know, Kobe Bryant, I I love going back to him, but you know, I watched a video on him the other day and he talks about like in the morning, he rolls out of bed and he sits down and he closes his eyes and, and call it meditation, call it just mindful practice, like whatever you want to call it. But he, he has a, a list of what he wants to do in that particular day. He's getting ahead of his day by sitting there, spending maybe five to 10 minutes box breathing, just sitting there visualizing how his day is going to be going, uh, visualizing the things that he wants to do and then visualizing himself succeed in those specific things that he wants to do. And it's just, it's just having that plan of attack and then freaking attacking it, you know, head yes. on. Um, yes, 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 yes. I think we've gone to Kobe enough. <laughs> Let's go. You want to dive in? Kobe's a pro- <laughs> oh, let's, let's, let's do it. All right, man. Uh, yeah, so box breathing, dude. So, I mean, are you a, are you a proponent? Like, are you, are you implementing that in your, in your daily routine? Or, sorry, daily habit? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think breathing is, it is the, <laughs> it's one of the most powerful tools that we have. Uh, uh, and I think um, it does a ton of different things for us. Um, and you can use it in so many different ways. That's the best part for me is like, if, if you're frustrated, like you go to your breath and it, it will bring your heart rate down. It will, um, bring you into the present moment. It will, um, uh, slow everything down. So to say, like it, it, it just does so many different things for us. Mm. Um, so for me, that's another thing that every morning is like, like that's on my schedule, like my Google calendar, like it's there just five minutes quality over quantity. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, that's with life. And I think even with baseball for, so with the guys that I work with one on one, um, or, or our guys at right state, like breathing is something that needs to be, you know, when it comes to using your breath to your advantage during a game, um, like within that, so I'll give you kind of an idea within the, within the pre pitch, uh, process that, that I think it should be, included with everybody's pre pitch process is some some form of breathing whether you're um whether you're inhaling exhaling like it would like it's some form of, of of breathing that allows you to regulate your um your mind and your body and get it to a place where um everything is working together mm. and what what is very very interesting about breathing is that it, it, it controls and it influences <clears throat> three different things so your state like the state of mind that you're in like it actually influences your state of mind so if i were to if i wanted to get like super super hyped up right now like i would just take a bunch of breaths that were super quick and super fast totally if i wanted to calm myself down like i would do the complete opposite like so it controls your state of mind it controls the state of that your body's in and it it, it also um influences your physiology Yep. Which, I mean, which you already know, like that's your heart rate, your your blood chemistry, all these different things. Um, and then your mechanics, like it just relaxes you. And we know, and you know, as a professional guy too, like when you're on the mound, you you like you, you probably do your best when when you're relaxed. Yeah. Like it's just like a thing. Like we all know that. Now it's just a matter of how do we get to that point consistently. Oh. And man. I think that starts with 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 the breath. Like mm. uh, you breathe to be. Breathe to be relaxed. Breathe to be present. Breathe to be this. Breathe to be that. Like it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's definitely a weapon, dude. Like, that, that's a weapon. Yes, a competitive weapon. Yes, and let me let me piggyback off that, dude, because I. I, I talk a lot about making like putting yourself in, in in situations to 
to to get the most out of you, right? Or or set yourself mm-hmm. up for success. Um, and it's like another one of those things, along with like uh, you know mental skills practice. It's it's we all know once we step out onto the field, lights come on, um, people are watching. There's a sense of uncomfortableness, and mm-hmm. I don't care how long you've done it, or I don't care how good you're at doing it. Uh, there's always going to be that time where you're a little bit uncomfortable, you know, call it nerves, uh, whatever. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I, I wrote another, I wrote another blog about this as well. I was coming off of the mound, uh, in, in the Caribbean series where like I had, you know, I like 20,000 people screaming at me when I was on the mound, we're playing Mexico. And, um, and I was like, I was uncomfortable. Right. But I think what I did correctly was I trained myself um, in my box breathing to be able to control breath and, Absolutely. and, and it's something dude, and it's going to sound cliche and corny and people are going to be like, wait, what? <laughs> but you got to practice your breath, man. Like you gotta, you gotta sit in silence and practice the way, you know, I call it diaphragmatic breathing, but like the way you Absolutely. breathe under control. Um, Absolutely. because you know, you, you said it signals a certain response. Like my response is when I get, you know, nervous or excited, uh, amped up, I start breathing out of my chest and that kind of signals, mm. you know, signals like a, a fight or flight, you know, which is fine. But at the same time, you know, fight or flight kind of sometimes brings, you know, that, that sense of unawareness, you know, you don't really know Absolutely. what you're doing type thing. Um, but yeah, man, I mean like, you know, practice being comfortable, you know, practice, uh, you know, I know Alan Jager talks a lot about like yoga, uh, you know, practice yep. yourself, practice doing things, um, you know, in a very relaxed state that you can always go back to, you know, even, exactly. even when you're out there on the mound or you gotta, you, you know, you talk earlier in the show about clutch hitting. Everyone wants to be a clutch hitter. You're up there, bases loaded two outs, you know, tie and run at third and your heart rate starts accelerating and, and you want, you know, you want to be this clutch guy, but it's like, what, what are the, what are the certain practice methods that we can utilize to, um, to benefit you, uh, or attribute to you becoming that guy? You exactly. And, and dude, like you hit the nail on the head. Like that is where that's why it's so important to to practice your, your breathing consciously on a consistent basis. So you train your body, and you train your mind to get in those high pressure situations. Mm. And now you either it, like it's two choices, like your body either automatically does it or you've already set the foundation to where you know exactly what you need to do, mm. which is which is let me focus on my breathing right here. Yeah. Yep. If I want to be clutch, if I want to be consistent, I have to make sure that uh, I'm at the most regular space possible. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to focus on my breathing right now, bring my heart rate down, yep. and it's going to clear my mind. It's going to slow the game down, and then I'll be able to go. Yep. Now, and Alan, Alan. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. You're the guest. I keep interrupting you. <laughs> no, you're, you're good, man. Like, this is, I'm loving this conversation. Man. <laughs> Alan is one of the guys that I've uh, – I reached out to him last year, and we we kind of had a few conversations. And he's been he's love been that awesome guy. Love that guy helping me um, helping me through this process because he knows that this is something I'm super passionate about. Totally. Um, and, and and he talks about like you said, he talks about these things a lot. And uh, one thing I heard you say was the was the chest breathing, yep. like that stimulates that fighter uh, that fight or flight response. Yep. And one thing I like to always tell the guys that I work with is like chest breaths are stress breaths. Like it adds stress. <laughs> <laughs> it adds stress totally so you breathe through your chest but this comes back down to bro let's, this comes back down to like being aware of your habits totally like that's a habit yeah you know yeah that's a habit so yeah. once you become aware of these things and then once you look at yourself on video okay in this pressure situation like what do i actually do is my chest starting to like expand like really really fast that means i'm breathing through my chest and my my, my heart rate's probably up all the things that we don't want so now it's a matter of training training your body and training your mind again if you want to be clutch like this is probably if you want to perform under pressure this is probably one of the one of the weapons that you must master Mm. yeah like if you if we really want to be like 100 percent honest about it um totally um so i agree with you 100 percent. i and and and, uh and it doesn't come overnight man i mean that's you know for the listeners man like it doesn't uh you can't just sit there and have two sessions of box breathing, two sessions of, uh, you know, say, quote unquote, like leadership habit practice or whatever. Like these are 
these are things, man, that you, you got to, you know, what do they say? Like two weeks to build a habit. I think they like did a study on it or something. I'm not going to quote it, but 20, 21 days to build a habit, 90 days to build a lifestyle. I think. Oh, geez. is that right? I mean, shoot. It sounded <laughs> right. Might as well quote it. <laughs> I think, I think that's, I think that's what I've been seeing. Yeah. I'm not sure if those are the right numbers, but, I'm but we know, sure we know it's not two days. Yeah. We know it's not a couple sessions, right? Like we know, uh, yep. if you, if you want to start implementing these things and you want to be about it, not just sit here and talk about it. Like these are, it's, uh, it boils down to consistency, man. I'm like the biggest proponent of, of just being consistent. Um, you know, I learned at a, at a young age, man, like to be great is to be consistently good, you know, and to be consistently Absolutely. good, man, you just got to do the same, the same correct, efficient things day in and day. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You're so, you're so on point, man. Uh, this conversation is like getting me fired up. I know. I, I already lifted today, but I'll probably head back. You know, I got to throw a tight shirt on and, and get after it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dude, I think I think we covered it all, man. I mean, um, I, uh, I want to give you the floor now to kind of let my listeners know, you know, where they can find you as far as social media uh, outlets go and, uh, and, and where they can probably like get in touch with you if they're interested in, in you know, working with you. Absolutely. So right now, Instagram, um, Twitter, uh, Facebook, it, everything's the same. It's Diamond Hall. So it's D-I-A-M-Y-N-H-A-L-L. Should be that same way across every platform. And in the um, the one-on-one coaching program right now is is currently yeah, it's currently like super full. But oh, well, good if for you. you. Do, <laughs> yeah, man, it's it's been going pretty well. If, it, if you do want to work with me in the future. I mean, just shoot me, just shoot me a DM. Um, I don't, I don't I have a like website that's under construction right now. I'm doing some things with that, mm-hmm. but the best way to, uh, to, to, to reach out to me and to be able to eventually possibly work with me is, is definitely through the direct messages. Totally. Um, and then, uh, just so all the listeners are aware, I know, I know I, I say this on all my shows, but I'll link. Uh, I'll link everything uh, in the show notes. So IG, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Diamond, I'll I'll link that uh, in the show notes so people can just go down there and just click it. It'll go right to your page. Um, So what else I got for them as far as links go? Uh, A couple books. I got Heads Up Baseball. I got Mental ABCs, Pitching and Hitting. Is there any other specific like books or or things, tools that that you would recommend that I could link to in the show notes? Oh, absolutely. If you want to, if you want to dive into books, I can give you, uh, so you okay. got relentless, you got relentless by Tim Grover. Yep. Um, that's MJ's trainer, right? Oh yes. Yeah. That's my guy. Have you read that? Uh, next question, dude. I'm a, I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I'm a nerd. You got, um, you got the book by my mentor who's, uh, who's Dr. Marr, Dr. Charlie Marr. That's the author. Okay. And, uh, he wrote the complete mental game of baseball. Ooh. Um, yeah. That sounds, and that sounds cool. juicy. What else? It's, it's, it's good, man. It's really good. And then, um, the champion's mind for sure. Mm-hmm. Dr. Jim, uh, Jim Aframo. Dang, you know the, the, the title and the freaking author, dude, man. I, this is, this is, this is, I study this stuff, man. This love is, it. This is what I do, man. I love it. Um, you got mind Jim by, uh, that's, that's an all time. Yeah. Yeah. That's dude. That's, that's an incredible book right there. Yep. And even um even even One Pitch Warrior by oh, Justin I, Deemer. I haven't I haven't read that one yet. Hmm. The, probably my favorite of, of my favorite book of all time. It probably changed my, my career and my life is Body Mind Mastery by Dan Millman. Body Mind Mastery? Oh my goodness, yes, bro. Oh this geez. is the when you, when you, so this guy, Dan Millman, he went in and he worked with, uh, he worked with Phil Jackson's teams when they had Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, right? Mm. And when you take the Relentless book and you put it next to Body Mind Mastery and you take both of those approaches and you kind of put them together and you, you, you master both of those approaches to the game, like it, you, you'll be mentally you, and you'll understand where where the consistency from Kobe Bryant has come from, where the consistency of of, of Michael Jordan has come from, and both of these guys uh, were introduced like uh, with with like meditation and like breathing and like awareness and like mm. uh, 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 emotional awareness, physical awareness, like all 
all of these things, like it's combining everything that he has in there with the relentless book, and then you'll understand, you'll get a full understanding, and it'll help your game as a baseball player. It'll take your game to another level. And then, because, you, then you'll fly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, as far as as far as baseball books go, I would say, um, I know, I'm trying to think, Play Big, Dr. Tom Hansen. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite leadership books of all time, John C. Maxwell, 360 degree leadership. Dude, he, he came and spoke to us when I was with St. Louis. It was amazing. Are you serious? That guy's, that guy's a G. Oh my God. He's, he's dope, dude. He signed, he signed his new book. Um, gosh, what a, dude, I've read, uh, I like, I started, it's funny because like, obviously we have a keen sense for like these types of books, right? Like leadership you yeah. know, uh, types of books. And uh, I, re- I remember I started just reading a bunch um, and then like next thing I know, uh, I was like totally unaware of the author, right? And, I, and next thing I know, he's sitting here speaking to us in, in, uh, in the clubhouse wow. and it's like he's going over his different books. I'm like, yeah, I read that. I read that. I read that. Like, oh man, like I'm a big fan. <laughs> oh wow. man. He's, he's dope though. He's good. Good guy too. I can I can only imagine. How was that? Like, what did all they cover? Dude, he honestly, like what I loved about him is like, obviously what he talks about in his books, like you can kind of get a sense of very complexity, if you will. Um, yeah. But what, when he spoke in person, dude, it was like, success is just something that it, it, you don't have to overcomplicate it. And I think he, he was like saying, you know, a lot of people, and, and don't quote me on this, I'm, obviously I'm paraphrasing, but like he, he said a lot of people tend to think of success and they, they, they rank it in this very hierarchy state of being and it's so hard to get to and, um, and they kind of they fizzle out and they fade out along that route to success. But what he says is, you know, mm-hmm. why not make it simple, man? Like, you know, he, he, I think he, the book I read was like seven tools to success or seven, seven habits to, to build success or something. I don't know, but it was, uh, he basically saying like, you know, control the controllables, man, read every day, read, uh, you know, he says like spend 10 to 15 minutes reading a day or, or working your mind. Um, you know, he said like, be mindful about, uh, trying to go out of your way and like make someone's day better. And it was like hearing him say all this is like, oh yeah, you know, like that makes sense. Why don't, why don't yeah. I just apply it to myself? But it, it, sometimes it takes a certain individual of that, you know, high, you know, magnitude to say that. And then it clicks, right? <laughs> That's how we are. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. But he's, Dude, a, I would, Oh dope. my God. I, I would have loved that. Yeah. No, he's, Dude, that's awesome, man. He's good. Um, all right, man. I, uh, that's it, dude. Hey, freaking A, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, thanks for spending so much time with me, dude. And, and I'm, I'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to part this in two, man. So we'll do a part one, part two, release it Monday, Monday and a Thursday or Monday and a Friday or something of that, uh, that caliber. Um, but yeah, man, thanks again for coming on, dude. Thanks for your time. Let's, uh, let's keep the line of communication open moving forward. Um, I love what you're doing. I love your stuff. I love you, you know, just inspiring yeah. individuals, man, to, to just be the best version of themselves, man. That's, that's true. Uh, that's, that's, you can always spot the real ones, man. So I appreciate your time, uh, and I'll uh, sign you it, off there. All right, thanks man. a lot, man. Thank, I really appreciate you having me on, bro. All right, man. I, I mean, that'll do it. Episode 51, Diamond Hall. Appreciate him for coming on. Awesome dude, as you can tell. Um, I want to throw a quick little shout out to the individuals that continue to uh, hit me up on Instagram. The ones that that screenshot their their posts, or not their posts, but whatever platform they're listening to on, man. They screenshot on their iPhone and then they throw it on the Instagram, tag me. Uh, and, and I mean, just showing love, man. I, I can't honestly can't tell you guys how much that means to me a lot of work goes into these podcasts and um i just i i really do appreciate each and every one of you for listening and i appreciate the ones that are that are showing love to their followers on their instagram trying to spread the word about this show so if you want to do that i'm not begging i'm not telling you you have to but again it means a lot to me for those of you who do, who do that so uh, much love god bless and uh until next time your boys out